Staying right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's not in the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. Well, this is my annual show for the Jim Cook Day of Hope for Diabetes. Can't believe it's going to be the 22nd year for the Day of Hope. And it's Saturday, February 25th, right here at Eisenhower Medical Center at the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences on the campus of Eisenhower Medical Center. And joining me is, um, well, our medical keynote speaker, and it's Dr. Kieran, uh, I knew I was going to blow the last name, Di Natalia. How did Din I do? Dintiella. Dintiella. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to blow it. But you see, we're here to be calm, cool, and collected, right? That's what you're going to do. You specialize in stress management. Maybe I need to be de-stressed. I thought I was pretty de-stressed. <laughs> and also joining us is uh, Marilena Sid, who is the head of the diabetes program here at Eisenhower Medical Center. And let's see, you're a nurse of the, of the year a couple of years ago. Yes, ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, let's talk about the, the 22nd Annual Day of Hope. Well, we're uh, putting a good conference together for the community and healthcare professionals that would like to come in and learn about diabetes. And uh, we have great speakers here. Um, it's a great event. It's half a day, and we invite everyone to come in. Um, well, we've changed the format. Normally, it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. which it is starting mm -hmm. again at 8 o'clock in the morning, but we've gone to 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And this year, we're um, the last speaker ends at 12.30, but we do have a health fair that starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. There's always a lot of free stuff there. Mm -hmm. And then at uh, 11.30, Dr. D is going to be talking, or Dr. Calm, as you you told me. So make it easy for people. You see. Yes, exactly. So don't blow your last name, huh? Denitalia. Did I get it right that time? Almost. Almost. Yeah. Okay, close enough. Because um, you've written a book called Calm in the Midst of Chaos. That's right. Yeah. Tell me about it. How did you get involved with stress management? Definitely not intended. <laughs> <When> I, <laughs> you know, uh, I never thought that I would be a stress management expert, never. And it just happened. It was almost 10 years ago when I was under deep distress and didn't know what to do. Um, and no one there to really show me the way how to calm down. <laughs> of course, there are people, my friends, family members, saying it will be all right, you know, just calm down, but how? <laughs> yeah. I did not know. Um, and I accidentally and very fortunately stumbled upon certain principles and techniques. And they helped me calm down instantaneously, immediately. Wow. How is it possible when everything around you is going crazy? How is it possible for you to just calm down? How is it possible for you to find your peace of mind? I wondered at the time, and when that happened to me, that changed my life. That changed oh. my life. Yeah. Well, see, and stress for diabetes, stress can raise your blood sugar levels. And all of us people living with diabetes including me as now 56 years, um, that stress can raise your blood sugar levels. And we want to keep our blood sugar levels as consistently equal through the entire day. And if you get stressed out, it can raise your blood sugar levels. And we don't want to do that because diabetes affects so many parts of the body. It affects, it affects every single cell in the body. And of course, there's multiple com complications. Let's talk about those complications br briefly, Marilena. Mm -hmm. There are um, several, and that includes amputations, um, which we see a lot in the hospital. That's from circulation. Circulations, nerve damage uh, can cause neuropathy. Um, it can lead to amputations. That blindness, people go blind from diabetes. Um, heart attacks and strokes are two to four times higher risk for someone that has diabetes than someone that doesn't have it. 
and um, kidneys. Kidney damage, so the and dialysis is one of the, the issues. So and there are a lot of things they can prevent. And eyes. The eyes, they can go blind for, yes. from that. Yes, I they think. They don't control their sugar. I think the last statistic was um, it's diabetes is the leading cause of blindness, ages between like 20 and 72 mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. But so that's why we need to relieve the stress, and that's why you're here to talk about that during our seminar on Saturday, February 25th. My pleasure. Yeah, so. so can you share with the audience? You want them to come here <laughs> and hear your whole presentation because it will be about an hour in length. Yes. But what are those seven things that you found that helped you with your stress? You know, um, there are many ways to handle stress. And you know, a lot of times when you go and type in on the internet, you Google out, you get a lot of information. And most of that information that we are getting, not all, but most of it, is pretty superficial. You know, go for a walk, uh, do some exercise. Get a dog. <laughs> yeah. So, and all those things do help. There is no question about it. Um, however, what I teach and what I help people with is actually going to the root of the problem and uh, destroy stress or eliminate stress by its roots completely. And I created over the time, you know, after much research, after much study, after much experimentation, uh, many insights added to it, um, all the experiences, I um, designed a system called the PET system for stress free living. I said, but get a dog, the PET is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Pets really help. Yeah. Okay, so you this pet is something different. Yes, uh, obviously. <laughs> Without the maintenance that you need to do. <laughs> right. So um, P stands for three principles. E stands for two relaxation exercises. And T stands for one concentration technique. And when you combine these three components and practice it every day in your life. You know, it's a way of living more than practicing. It is actually a way of living. And once you start learning them and start implementing them in your life, it's just going to change the whole outlook, you know, for your life. And you will live stress-free. That is what it's all about. You will find that peace of mind and joy that you're looking for in your life. And that's what we all want. We want peace of mind and joy, don't we? That's it. That is yeah. the only thing that actually we need. Yeah. And what all we go after in life, whether it is money, whether it is uh, political power, <laughs> whether it is uh, something else, people are trying to find peace of mind in the end. That is what it is. Make you comfortable with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So when did you write this book, Calm in the Midst of Chaos? I started writing it three years ago. Okay. <laughs> it has been now three years. Every year I thought to release it, but you know, there is more work to be done, more work to be done. You're and causing then, stress for yourself then, you realize. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I think uh, it's going to be ready this year. I think in the next uh, few weeks, the book is going to be ready and will be published. Good. Well, you have a copy of it right here. Is this a, a precursor or a sample copy of it? Yes, it is a sample copy. Okay. Okay. And so where can we get this book? I know. Come to the Jim Cook Day of Overdiabetes at Eisenhower <laughs> Medical Center on Saturday, February 25th. Um, but where else can you get the book? You can also find the book on uh, Amazon. Okay. And it is also going to be in bookstores. Fantastic. Like Barnes & Noble. Yeah. in airports and a lot of other places. Actually. Now, airports, you do need to be re relieve stress, don't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Now, can you give us any uh, recommendation, recommendations of your seven points of stress besides the PET? Can you define it a little bit more? Um, you mean the system itself? The system or itself. Or the system itself. Um, let me give you the essence of stress management. And I think that is going to very well, you know, help our people, you know, who are watching this interview and anyone basically. So the core concept around which all, you know, stress management revolves, and I call it the essence of stress management and prevention, the loss of thought mechanics, the loss of thought mechanics. There are three laws 
like your physical world is governed by the physical laws like Newton's laws of motion the same way your mental world is governed by these laws of thought mechanics and by understanding these laws you'll be able to your govern you know, you'll, you'll be able to govern your mental world better means you'll be able to find that peace of mind and joy in your life so what are those three laws number one as long as thoughts flow freely in your mind you will be in a happy state of mind you'll be happy you'll be naturally peaceful it's like a river that is flowing you know that water flows in the river and when you see that you feel so naturally peaceful it feels good it looks good and the water is healthy right the same way when thoughts flow in your mind freely your mind is healthy you feel happy number two Stagnated thoughts lead to stress. Now, what leads to that stagnation? It is your attachment to thoughts. The same way, like, you know, when the water is flowing in the river, and then you put a block to that flow of water, and all the water starts accumulating, and soon, that stagnated water, you know, the bugs start growing in there, bacteria <laughs> start <laughs> growing in there, and it is not any more healthy. It is not any more drinkable. It, it's, you know, it smells and all the problems, right? The same way, to the flow of thoughts in your mind, if you block that flow and thought starts accumulating, like you worry about something, you ruminate about whatever happened in the past, and sometimes you think about what is going to happen tomorrow in the future, or near yeah. from now, right, the future, and you keep thinking about it, you're going to create the block to the flow of thoughts and you feel unhappy, you feel distressed. That is what stress is. And the third law is wherever you focus your thoughts on, that becomes your reality. That's right, absolutely. It doesn't matter. You turn your attention from here to there, then you're going to see whatever it is. You're going to think about whatever it is. You change your reality. In the same way when I look here, mm -hmm. I change my reality. And we basically create our reality using our thoughts, whatever that we are focusing them on. Mm -hmm. And the moment you understand it, hey, look, you know, this thing is bothering me, you know. Um, for example, for some people, the Trump presidency is bothering them. <laughs> for some people, that's fine, right? But for some people, it's bothering them. And you don't have to focus on it if it is really bothering you. You can turn your attention away to wherever you want to. You have the choice. So, and you'll be stress-free. So when you combine these three laws and start implementing in your life these three laws, it dramatically changes everything. Well, I've always figured, because I've had the type 1 diabetes for 56 years, I've never been back in the hospital, thank you God, but I've always been a very optimistic little girl. Yeah. And um, I, always, I always tell people that I always try to make a take a positive attitude on everything. And I said, if you were a normal person and you got up every morning for a week and you looked in the mirror and you said to yourself, I feel terrible, I look terrible, in a week you're gonna feel terrible and you look terrible, yes. you know? Yes. So that's why I always try to, try to keep positive thoughts. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. About everything, you including my diabetes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know the beauty of these positive thoughts? To begin with, we are positive people. <laughs> <laughs> Our mind <laughs> produces positive thoughts to begin with. Negative thoughts come and go. Negative thoughts are like accidents on the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> they come and go. Uh -huh. If you stop there and you keep thinking about it, you are going to cause a traffic jam, right? And then it's not going to be good for right. anyone right. who is there. The same way, when negative thoughts come to your mind, don't stop there. If you stop there, <laughs> you're going to create a stagnation mm -hmm. <laughs> and cause stress. Right. And then you'll be a negative person. Then you'll that's be a it. negative person. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but you were just talking about the Trump presidency. You've also written a new book, and it just took, it just turned off the screen here on your iPad. Uh, Oops. And that's my daughter. <laughs> oh, she's beautiful. How cute. <laughs> <She> is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so talk about your new book that you're just coming out with. Yeah, two books are coming out. Yeah. One is The Calm in the Midst of Chaos, and the other one is The Seven Keys to Surviving the Trump Presidency. Um, and it is basically about 
healing the post-election stress that millions of people are experiencing every day. It is about healing the nation from this post-election stress. It's about getting people together to say, hey, look, you may like it, you may not like it. And many presidents were elected, you know, throughout our history, you know, many presidents. And some people liked it, some people did not like it. It's time to get together. It's time to move on. It's mm -hmm. time to give him a chance. And more importantly, it's time to not stress about it. <laughs> because the person who is uh, 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 most affected by the stress is you. Right, absolutely. Because when you're stressed about, no matter what it is about, whether it is about um, the Trump presidency, whether it is about your daughter, whether it is about your health or whatever it is, you know, or diabetes, when you are stressed, automatically um, it leads to many, many devastating consequences mm -hmm. in your life. Stress is associated with the six leading causes of death in the United States. Heart disease, yeah. cancer, lung disease, stroke, um, accidents and suicides, and much more, liver disease, addictions, rapid aging, diabetes levels go up, high, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up, palpitations, reduced immunity, you know, you get catch infections easily. Stress has its fingerprints on every single body system. It's not good for you. And that is what this book is about. You know, calm down, you'll be all right. Things will be all right. That's why I call you Dr. Calm, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on the subject, or go back to, how did you get interested in medicine? Um, I grew up with the thought when, uh, even when I was a child, you know, my mother always wanted to do medicine, actually. Oh, did she? And then, you know, she got into med school, but at the time, you know, um, she did not have money to get, you know, to pay for the fee for the med school. And she said, okay, um, I want to make my son a doctor. <laughs> and she used to tell me, I remember, like, you know, when I was very young, so, you know. So and that, then, oh, go ahead, yeah. that does, did that cause a lot of stress to her to get you through medical school? <laughs> I had to say that I am very, very uh, fortunate that my mother inculcated that, you know, thought right from very, you know, early age and also very supportive throughout my career. I mean, she is one of the most important people along my father, you know, and I'm greatly indebted to both of them that I am here today. And, yeah. And how long have you been at Eisenhower? Two years. Well, you're some of the new ones here, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where's home for you? What is it? Where's home for you? Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in uh, India. You did? Yeah. For the first 25 years, I wow. grew up there. And then I have been here in the United States for almost 10 years now. And where's your medical degree from? Um, I got my medical degree med school. Uh, I did it in uh, India. Okay. And then I came down here. I did my master's in public health. And then I did my uh, internal medicine residency. And then I also did a diploma in uh, American Board of Integrative and Holistic Medicine and a few other things. How do you see how holistic medicine works with traditional medicine? It is holistic. It is bringing together everything. And see, that gets rid of stress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We live in a fragmented world. Yes, we do. And our medical care is amazing. The internal medicine, you know, the modern medicine the modern surgeries, that is amazing. You know, we have come so far, you know, we advanced so far in our medical technology, and that's all good. Yet, there is something that is missing, you know, that holistic aspect of bringing other modalities and add to it. It is not, these are not mutually exclusive. When you add these things together, they complement each other very well, and you can help the person as a whole, you know, the whole being. <laughs> That's right, and that's what we need. And I think as a person with diabetes, and Mary Lando, I'm sure you have a lot of patients. Mm -hmm. Always when they come in, especially new diagnosed and overwhelmed, they don't know what to do and what to eat and nothing. So they are very stressed and their sugars obviously are very high and we have to educate them, calm them down. <laughs>
and um, that's how they can get to control their diabetes better. There's a lot of ways that they can control it, and one of them is to to not be panicking about it and learn how to manage it. Well, that's why we have this. It's a free mm -hmm. Jim Cook Day of Vote for Diabetes on Saturday, February 25th, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning till 12.30 in the afternoon. Dr. Dinatalia. Dinatalia. <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Uh, Calm. Dr. Dr. Calm. <laughs> uh, we'll be speaking at 11.30, and please come and join us uh, for the Day of Hope for Diabetes again on February 25th here at Eisenhower Medical Center, right here at the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences. Thank you, Dr. So much. Dr. Calm. I, you're so calm, I can't even ask my questions any longer. <laughs> I can't mm -hmm. say your last name. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me. And Mary Elena, we'll be right back with you and the president mm -hmm. of the Desert Diabetes Club. All right. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Creativity, confidence, self-esteem, critical thinking. These are the precious gifts children receive from the arts. It's why the McCallum Theater is devoted to helping children discover their potential. We impact the lives of thousands of kids each year through performances, arts education, and hands-on programs across our community. Join us. Help make an impact here at the McCallum Theater. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. You can always see something extraordinary that inspires you here. It captivates, thrills, and delights us. That's why the McCallum Theater is so special. Here you can see award-winning Broadway musicals and plays, sparkling performances by the biggest stars, and all the best from the world of music, dance, and comedy. So come, join us, right here at the McCallum Theater. Okay, now we come to the housekeeping part of the 22nd annual Jim Cook Day of Hope for Diabetes on Saturday, February 25th, uh, here at Eisenhower Medical Center on the campus, uh, or I should say at the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences on the campus of Eisenhower mm -hmm. Medical Center. And joining us, Mary Elena and me, is the president of the Desert Diabetes Club, Ron Cro Cochran. Ron, welcome again to talk Thank about you. desert. I have to tell you, you've been president now for, what, two years, three uh, years? Three years. Three this, years. This is the fourth year. This is, has it been four yeah. years? Oh my, time goes by when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you, you are very organized and I really appreciate your attitude and everything because you're keeping Mary Elena and me in, in check here, mm -hmm. you know, so, because Mary Elena is our liaison between Eisenhower and the Desert Diabetes Club and I'm on the board of directors and spokesperson. Yes. Been doing that a long time. Mm -hmm. so it's like, this is like my 18th year to MC the Day of Hope for Diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so, but Ron, how, why did you get involved with the Desert Diabetes Club? Well, I, I became involved basically because uh, I care about the community, but more importantly, I suffer with severe reactive hypoglycemia, which is the opposite of diabetes. And I came into contact with Mary Elena, and she was counseling me on my problems and uh, affliction, if you will. And an opening came on the board and I joined the board because I thought I could give back to the community. And you should certainly have. Yeah. So let's talk about the Day of Hope. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning with the health fair, a lot of free products, come get free things, mm -hmm. and coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the first seminars start at 9.30. 915. 915. 9 9 you see, you got, we changed the whole day and it's thrown me all off. <laughs> mm -hmm. 9.15 in the morning would be our first speakers. Mm -hmm. That's true. And do you know who the speakers are at 9.15? At 9.15, um, I'm not well, quite we, sure. Well, we have Dr. Batarze. Who oh, yes. Oh, yes. Dr. Yeah. Batarze mm -hmm. is a kidney special, uh, specialist and nephrologist, mm -hmm. and he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier that one of the complications of having diabetes is the, uh, kidney. the kidney, kidney damage. damage. Uh -huh. Yeah, kidney, kidney problems. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Batarze is excellent. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, the dietitian, Sherry. Uh, she'll be talking about the myths of uh, diabetes nutrition. Um, 
she'll actually speak twice uh, at 9.15 and 10.15. So that if someone misses her, they can go to the next session. Um, we also have Brandon, who's the uh, manager and the pharmacist at Walgreens. He'll, he'll be speaking about the latest um, pharmaceutical uh, new approved medications for diabetes management. And we also have Bill, who's a physical therapist here uh, that has type 1 diabetes for many, many years, who yeah. has been the first person with type 1 diabetes to finish a, a Ironman uh, twice. Bill Carlson. Bill Carlson. Yeah, what I mean, to uh, finish the Ironman twice mm -hmm. having type he 1 diabetes? He just yes. did another one in Hawaii. How, how did he do that? Yeah, <laughs> so he, uh, and it's a motivational. Uh, as a motivational speaker, he will be wonderful because he's here to share the story to let people know that having diabetes doesn't have to keep you from doing things that, that you want to do. So um, he'll be here and we also have uh, Yuri is one of my educators. He will be speaking about the latest uh, new uh, insulin for diabetes uh, management and myself i'll be speaking about the insulin pump and continuous glucose monitors all the new technology that we have to manage diabetes for both type 1 and type 2. well we only got a couple of minutes left we mm -hmm. spent so much time with dr mm -hmm. d dr mm -hmm. com mm -hmm. um, i want to mention that we really are, are thrilled that the h and n and francis c burger foundation is mm -hmm. our, our title sponsor again this mm -hmm. year. This is the third year. We're really honored to have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we need to mention the website. It's emc.org um, slash ddc. Um, they can go and find the information there. Uh, we're going to put the program there so they can see the times. It is from 8 to 12, so come early. <laughs> and desert, it's DDC is for Desert Diabetes Club. Mm -hmm. Correct, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Ron, invite everybody to come. For, it's free. The event is totally free. Well, it's free. There's free valley parking, uh, easy access to the Annenberg Center. Uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic day of education, of, of learning, and uh, the health fair is going to be fantastic. Wow. And we'd like to say uh, the day of hope, yes. with education, inspiration, and uh, Education. Well. <laughs> mm -hmm. So join us all at the Eisenhower Medical Center on February, Saturday, February 25th at 8 o'clock in the morning for the Jim Cook 22nd mm -hmm. Annual 22nd. Jim mm -hmm. Cook Day of Hope for Diabetes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary Lena said, thank for joining you. me. And thank you, Ron, president of the Desert <laughs> Diabetes Club. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you. thank you, and thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.